Hello and welcome to the Global Fashion Workshop channel. Welcome our dear subscribers from different countries. Sweden, Switzerland, Great Britain, Spain and many others. Today we have a special guest, the author of Denim Courses, Vitaly Shkrigunov. In our channel, February is the month of denim and casual clothes. You'll see Vitaly a lot. That's why I would like for you to know him better. Vitaly, please tell us where you started, how you became a designer. Undoubtedly, since childhood I've always been interested in how clothes are made, how shapes are formed, the ratios and how fabric behaves on a human body. It all started with my sister's dolls. During school years, I took a serious step in my life against social convention by transferring from crafts classes for boys to home economics classes for girls, where I got my first knowledge on how clothes were made. But it was really close to you, wasn't it? Were you really drawn to it? It was very important and very interesting since it was my first step towards my profession. When I was a teenager, my parents bought me clothes to grow into, which I didn't like very much. So I restitched my first jeans out of the jeans that were three sizes bigger. I studied how patterns were made and I made my first jeans out of the old ones. Naturally, I had to unpick them first. I was interested in how it was all assembled. Yes, how everything is constructed. Yes, because I had to reassemble them. The jeans didn't turn out to be of the best quality, obviously, but I was fine with how they fit, which was interesting for me. It's like all of a sudden, out of these pieces of garment, you get clothes. This is what you live in. So, after finishing school, when I first entered the Stavropol Technology College, I became a fashion designer. That was a fundamental contribution to my profession. After that, fate brought me to a large-scale production of jeans in the south of Russia. You probably were drawn there, weren't you? During my second and third year of college, we learned of all types of fabrics and garments. I often joke about how I can sew pretty much anything from underwear to fur coats, but during the process of studying, I made jeans for myself and I realized that it was my kind of fabric. Denim was my kind of fabric. Comfortable fabric. I would put it differently. This is a men's fabric, because boys aren't neat anyway, but denim is fine with such sloppy handling. If you work with silk, you have to have perfect hands, everything needs to be smooth, clean, you need a fresh ironing table. But denim doesn't really need that, because the fabric itself is rough. Secondly, boys are not that careful in making clothes, I think. Right, there is no correction of errors in silk. Exactly. And denim is a peculiar fabric in that all the defects, a curvy stitch or something else, all those defects become effects. Especially when you wear it for a very long time, it'll fade and crimple. That can even become your signature move, so to speak. During that period, I was interested in how everything worked. I learned more about the history of denim, how it was made. I understood that the knowledge that college was giving me was insufficient. And at some point I got an internship at a production site that started a brand. Thanks to this, I got into the largest production in Russia at the time, called Gloria Jeans, where the whole denim industry was focused. It was very interesting to see it all, not in a book or magazine, but with my own eyes. In addition, I got to talk to the big names in the industry. And surely there are some secrets in that production. Absolutely. What's interesting is that my teachers were 
the founders of some fundamental works who are still greatly appreciated here since the Soviet times. Unlike classic pants, jeans were not created by professionals. They were made from the point of view how a non-professional could make them in a simpler way. That's why I say that anybody can make jeans. This is actually a very important message. It's true. Even if you're just starting to learn to sew, jeans are a very convenient step. Because the fabric itself is like paper. It doesn't have... This fabric is grateful and easily gives away its secrets in the process. As a result, having graduated from college, I couldn't even call myself a designer and a super professional. I got into another production and worked there for three years as a designer of men's clothing. And since the company produced the non-civilian variety, like military uniforms, I got to supervise this very serious and interesting range of clothes. Because first of all, it was statutory clothing. Secondly, in denim, as in military uniform, every detail is a practical element, which is created for a certain function, not decorative purposes. And this is what I like in denim clothes a lot. Nothing is done for beauty. So, it looks like at every stage of study and of working, you got more and more knowledge and therefore expanded your range of skills. Yes, at some point I realized that personal experience is great, but you need to back it up with fundamental science. I went to the Ivanovo Textile Academy to become a technologist of light industry or engineer of light industry. Studying there gave me an understanding of how to not only make beauty, but how to make or assemble things faster from the technological point of view. This is very valuable. Which we actually have in the course. Yes, we made not just a simple piece of clothing and explained the sequence of assembly. We explained how to make the process as simple as possible and save time so you wouldn't have to move between pieces of equipment a lot and just assemble jeans from start to finish in little time. Yes, this is very cool. It looks like this is the result of such a long way. Exactly 20 years. This is very pleasant. Well, are you happy with your success, your results? You have your own brand now. If an artist says, I'm satisfied, he or she is becoming less flexible. Naturally, I'm against that. Naturally, I'm not satisfied. This is just the beginning for me. I knew you would say that. We have a lot coming our way. Yes, and another new stage of your life has started, when besides developing your own brand, you started teaching. Actually, I always joke about this, that the universe always answers. It's important to ask. In fact, before I got a request to make this video course, my friends and I discussed this and we all asked ourselves what would we want to do to leave behind. And I said that during these past 20 years I've collected in my head and in my hands the knowledge on how to make jeans, and there are basically no books on how to do it. There are a few lessons or none at all in training institutions, and here I have all the skills I've learned and got from my practical experience. And in bits and pieces. In bits and pieces on production sites, starting from working in production both in Russia and China. Often there are different options in assembling, which we talk about in our courses. So I said I wanted to write a book. And some of my friends said that a book was a great idea, but it would be the property of one person available only to those who bought the book. But a video course is a large-scale thing. You personally present yourself to your viewers and tell them from start to finish how it all works. Well, yes, it's nice. How you get pants from this piece of fabric, 
As a matter of fact, my favorite part of the job is when you collect these pieces, put them together, and at some point they start to rustle like jeans. Yes, we use this phrase a lot in the courses. At some point you hear this noise and it's not just a piece of fabric, it's the pants that start making this noise. Cool. Well, do you use these techniques in your work? Absolutely. Here's the thing. Being a technologist, an engineer technologist, I look at genes from the point of view of each individual action. Because at a production site, let's say there are 50 people, and each one of them is doing their own small part. It's a great machine where you put in a ready cutting and these cut pants eventually need to move in harmony or return to some other machine. And in the end, a pair of jeans comes out. That is, if we look at it from one person's point of view and just take them through this sequence, we'll see that it's easier to make not one, but seven pairs at once. It doesn't matter now, you're making one and the same job. It doesn't matter, because you're sitting and working, and on top of it, after you make two pockets, your third one is perfect, and the fourth and fifth are just flawless. This will be the main standard. That is why repetition matters. I'm sure your first jeans will be good, the second pair will be better, the third one will be perfect. Vitaly, today you look fabulous. Tell us, is this also a part of your brand? <laughs> Thank you, absolutely. As a designer, I have to wear my own clothes. And our brand, Two Bears, creates... We're getting deeper into men's style. As a man, I clearly see what a man needs, how he needs it, and how he moves. Whether it's comfortable or not. Yes, is it comfortable, is it not? Plus, men are very conservative and picky in clothing, especially when it comes to jeans, because these days jeans are like tailored suits at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. It's true. Because at some point tailored suits conquered the world and are still common standard in some official circles. The same is with jeans, they unite all of us. Both a poor person and a president wear them. That is for sure. The only difference is that maybe a president wears more expensive jeans, but basically they're similar five-pocket jeans. Imagine what a unique product. It's the uniform of our time. Tell us a bit about your brand. What did you start with? Where did you start from? At some point when I was working as a chief designer of men's department of the Urbana brand, I realized that it wasn't interesting for me to just create clothes according to the opinions of buyers, vendors, sales managers, that is, the sales department. And I wanted to form my own view, how it would be interesting for me and what I would like to make. I basically left into the unknown with a small set of skills, without knowing the financial side of it all. But the main thing is, I left with a great number of friends, colleagues, who were responsible for their own specific position and job. Draftsman, technologist, lab technician, auto washing specialist, all these jobs. So anyway, I was able to create my first collection in a simpler, cheaper way, using friendship. We created our first collection. Since college times, I wasn't into competitions, fashion weeks, all these loud things. I was more interested in making clothes for people. As a matter of fact, I left all the competitions with an empty suitcase because it didn't matter to me after the show. I showed people my clothes, showed them my view on how a person should look at the time. And often men would come and buy the samples at the show right away. So it was interesting for me to sell and buy more fabric and make two shirts, not one. The same way here, I had the main goal. The goal was to shoot and sell the garments so that the clothes 
wouldn't hang in the closet or stay in photos, but live their own life. Otherwise, no point in making them. So we made a small collection of 30 units. We sold it all in a month. A friend of mine who represented me in the stores said, OK, make more. We like all of it. So at some point we did that. Looking back, I think it was child's play. We were just beginning to establish our presence. Yes, but did you get confidence because of it? I got confident the moment I was walking down the street and met a person I didn't know who was wearing my clothes. That's so cool. This is success. That was important. At some point there was a person who was an expert in the finance sphere and knew how to sell all this, a person who thought in numbers. So this is how the Two Bears brand was born. There was resistance. There is always resistance between a graphics artist and a craftsman who makes the design come to life. There is always resistance in turning a picture to life. Sometimes either the graphic side or the handicraft side suffers. There is resistance between the graphic side or an artist and the commercial side where a person counts money. The next part is the most interesting part. Since the center of street fashion is Berlin, we decided to take two bears from the Berlin coat of arms, the Berlin Bears. Back during the Soviet times, there was resistance between East and West Berlin. Plus it was Berlin that the authentic Levi's jeans started to come in from to the Soviet Union. All these aesthetics came to us from there. And if we conclude this talk, our Two Bears brand is a project of two friends who are in love with denim. We look at it as a small production. As a rule, my partner and I make very small batches. But with all your heart. You could say that every one of our garments keeps the warmth of our hands. Yes, sure. This is all valuable. It's like a signature moment of your brand. Very interesting story about the brand. Vitaly, thank you so much, because it's very interesting. And I wish success and prosperity to your brand. Thank you. Since you founded a brand, you started teaching. What are your plans for the future? Remembering the words of my teacher Irina, who said that her main mission was to teach as many people as possible to sew. In my case here, I have a new mission, to teach as many people as possible to make jeans. As a matter of fact, this is a type of clothes that anyone can make. Yes, thanks to this we recorded some very cool courses on denim. And I think any person can really cut the jeans at their kitchen even. Once again, being an engineer of light industry, I collected and adjusted information about materials and other things so that anyone can make jeans from people who own an atelier with all 30 units of special equipment to regular people who own a single thread sewing machine. Yes. Our course is good for all of them. Yes, exactly. Vitaly, please tell us, how difficult or how easy was it to teach your first courses on camera? It's just so vivid in my memory. I'd like to hear your opinion. Irina, this is partially your course as well, because we created it basically from scratch together. Let me rephrase it. I had the skeleton and you had the material to fill it up with and to form this into one logical teaching course. Yes, we tried, we really did. Besides, we made a choice that's important for me as Vitali. We chose mom's jeans. By the way, I created those jeans specifically for my mom, my most demanding and picky customer. We worked on those jeans for years. I made a lot of jeans of this model for my mom. 
Yes, we started with this model. We started the first course and it was mom's jeans. We also had the most important client here, it's Irina, for whom we used to sew. Yes, the difficulty was in the fact that our teacher Irina was an ardent opponent of jeans. She said that jeans ruined people's figures, made people too relaxed. Jeans have a lower waistline than the natural one. Irina was skeptical about this type of clothing. She said, no, they won't fit. Everything will be very bad. And we made a test for ourselves by saying, Irina, will do without fitting. Yes, we took the main measurements to feel safe. But again, I'm repeating myself, I often measure not my customer's actual size, but their jeans. Something close to the body, because jeans are worn a bit lower than the natural waistline. It's easier to measure the belt of the jeans then you can see exactly what kind of jeans will fit perfectly, what size. Naturally, our Russian students were very interested in learning the American sizing system. Since jeans are an American invention, they are measured in inches, and the Russian metric system uses centimeters. So many people get confused with these numbers like 30, 31, 32, or 25, that is, the sizes are confusing. And respectively, our European students will find it interesting to learn about numbers like 50 or 54, and the numbers of Russian sizes. We wrote a special brochure in such a way that there's little text and lots of information, as in infographics what to do with these patterns, how to determine your size, how to make another size from this basic template, the one you need. Vitaly, the fabric shrinks, denim. Tell us, what do we do with it? Here's the main distinction. With other fabrics, if you want to make pants, you steep them in water first, wool, for instance. First you wet, you pre-shrink the fabric, wet it, dry it. It shrinks just enough, and then you make those pants. With denim, there is no preliminary thermal contact with water. That is, first you need to make the jeans, and then they get washed, rubbed during further production, get treated. Chemically. Yes, so during this process, the jeans shrink. That is, they shrink a few millimeters, centimeters. And therefore, after all these thermal procedures, they become the jeans we're used to, with a worn effect or some other. Well, that's why it's difficult for many people to make jeans. And that's why we made ready-to-use templates. And the draftsmen included 3-4% of shrinkage of the fabric into these templates. That is why we don't do fitting during production. There is no point. There is no point. You try them on, start stitching, try to fit them to the body. They'll shrink. And then you wash them and they shrink. And it won't be your garment anymore. As a matter of fact, our templates have been developed completely based on European standards, the common ones. That is, they are used in Russia, China, the US, Europe, Asia, anywhere. That's why it will be easier for you. You'll be comfortable working with these patterns. It'll be very convenient. On top of this, combining all the reference marks, you'll produce exactly the same jeans as I did for my lovely mom a long time ago. This is so touching, Vitaly. But in fact, your success story is very interesting. And we're grateful to you that you started to teach and shared your knowledge with our students. Our subscribers love you very much. I am grateful to our whole team, without which none of this could happen. We're happy that today we talked with Vitaly. You got to know him better. We'll continue making videos with him. That's it for today's video. Goodbye. All the best from Irina and Vitaly. Bye-bye.